Our next story explores a strange use of dogs during World War II. As the smoke clears over Pearl Harbor in December 1941, the U.S. Army knows that a costly war in the Pacific is now inevitable. But the opening months of 1942 go badly for the Allies, and more and more territory in the Pacific is lost to the Japanese. There is a growing sense of desperation. How will the military defeat an enemy that is now dug in on islands all across the South Pacific? More than 60 years later, Andrew Turner from Kansas City, Kansas, has a document that may reveal a classified attempt to give new bite to the nation's armed forces. I seem to have stumbled upon a bit of mysterious World War history. Honored to meet you. Come My on pleasure. in. Thank you. So what do you have here for me? Well, I have a bunch of documents, 1940s, World War II era, formerly belonging to a Sergeant Henry Simpson. How did you come about this stuff? I worked for an online auction company, and this stuff came in on consignment. So the documents appear to be about a secret program to train attack dogs off the coast of Mississippi. What's really cool about these documents is that they deal with canine service in World War II. But as I was going through the documents, it, it kind of seemed like there was an extra level to it. Like, it, it wasn't just, you know, simple dog training. So well, what, what led you to that conclusion? Well, Most of the documents are bureaucratic and not terribly interesting. But one letter caught Andrew's eye. To Sergeant Simpson from a soldier he had served with named Don Reynolds, it appears that there's some sort of official army in investigation going on. Oh, really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. He says, we heard on the island that two full colonels were coming down from Washington to investigate affairs. It's not clear what the investigation is about, but the target is a man named Prestre. It looks as though the colonel knows that Mr. Prestre is after his hide. So he is going after Mr. Prestres. Who is Mr. Prestre? Apparently, he has something to do with training these dogs. Okay. What do you think of Mr. Prestre as a dog trainer? Whatever the investigation is about, really? the letter writer okay. seems very nervous. Oh, look at this. Pardon my terrible typing. I'm in the orderly room in Gulfport and was afraid one of the officers would come in any minute. However, I don't think there is any fear of your letters being opened. And I think you can write to me safely. So there's something going on. Something Some, going on. Something shady is happening here. Uh -huh. OK. I consider myself an amateur World War II historian, you know, but I've never heard anything about this before. Now, what is it you want me to find out for you? Well, basically, what is the Army doing training these dogs? And who was this Mr. Prestre, and why was the Army investigating it? Well, I'm going to do my best. I'm a cat guy myself, but I'll try <laughs> to find too. out as much about your dog story here as I can. All okay, right? great. Thanks. So I'll get back to you. I look forward to it. All the documents in the folder date to World War II. The letter between Simpson and Reynolds discussing the investigation of Mr. Prestre is certainly the most curious. It appears they gave a questionnaire to all the men. Did Mr. Prestor ever promise or offer you a commission? What threats did you ever hear Mr. Prestor make against fellow officers of this command? But it doesn't really tell us what he did or even what he was accused of. What the dog training is for is not clear either. Let's see what else we got here. So this is like a list of the dogs assigned to the project and the date that they were acquired by the military. According to these documents, the dogs are being trained off the coast of Gulfport, Mississippi, at a place ironically called Cat Island. I don't have much luck online running down any of the people mentioned in the documents, but the entry War Dogs throws up a couple of interesting items. Listen to this from March 1942. This is just three months after the bombing of Pearl Harbor. The Army will accept dogs of good health and intelligence to be trained for national defense and called upon owners of suitable dogs to volunteer their pets for selective service. It was a time of growing national paranoia. German U-boats had been spotted off the American coast, and there were reports and worries about spies coming ashore. The military was worried about sabotage of their coastal supply depots and decided they wanted to use sentry dogs to help
against these kinds of attacks. The U.S. Army turned to its quartermaster corps to train the dogs. But there's no mention of whether or not this is connected to what was going on on Cat Island. Let me try to dig a little bit more here. Listen to this. The Cat Island War Dog Reception and Training Center. Casual visitors are not welcome. Training secrets remain secret. Cat Island is about eight miles off the coast of Gulfport, Mississippi. I've arranged to meet a Gulfport native, Barry Foster. So, you've been out to this Cat Island? Hey, this Cat Island is very special to me. He says he started researching Cat Island as a teen after hearing rumors about its secret wartime past. I always have time for amateur historians. They often turn up information that professional historians think come across. Local Captain Kim Fulton has agreed to ferry us out to the island. Captain Kim, how you doing, man? It's about a half hour trip from shore. Barry tells me he was so taken with the mystery of Cat Island that he spent years doing research and tracking down eyewitnesses. <laughs> if the military wanted a secluded, hard to reach place to run a secret program, this was definitely a good choice. There's not even a dock we can land at. They probably believed that the terrain here was somewhat similar to the islands in the Pacific. We come across remnants of the Army's presence here, rusted hulks of machinery and footprints where buildings once stood. I believe we have the kennels here, Takufu. I tell Barry what I've read about the Army Quartermaster Corps program to train dogs as sentries, scouts, and detectors. Is this part of that? No, actually, at the time this started, there were four sites where they were training dogs. This was a fifth that was kind of off the radar. Off the radar? Barry explains that the top secret program on Cat Island started around November 1942. It was run by the Army Ground Forces and headed up by a civilian, a Swiss refugee from New Mexico. His name was William A. Prestry. Yes. Yes. This is the guy in my letter. But well, what was he trying to do? He convinced somebody higher up in the military that he could train dogs to scent and attack people with Japanese blood. Barry tells me that Prestray's plan to win the war was to train a ferocious assault force of 20 or 30,000 dogs. Pax would be trained to sniff out the Japanese and hunt them down in a first wave of island invasions. Okay, it sounds kind of far-fetched, but I... It sounds very far-fetched now, but remember in that time that we were looking for any advantage we could get mm -hmm. to win a world war. Barry says the Army greenlit Prestray's plan and gave him three months here to test his theory. The letter that I'm investigating suggests that Prestor was under investigation by the military. Do you know anything about that? You know, I don't. Barry says Simpson and Reynolds were simply soldiers stationed on Cat Island. He suspects that the investigation they are discussing may have something to do with Prestry's training methods. Well, his idea was to take American soldiers who were of Japanese descent, and the Japanese Americans were brought here not as dog trainers to Khufu, but dog bait. As what? As dog bait. What do you mean they were dog bait? Barry tells me that some of the eyewitnesses he interviewed were these Japanese-American soldiers. He's arranged a meeting for me back on shore. Barry sent me to a local VFW watering hole to meet a veteran named Raymond Nosaka. Now 92, Ray was 26 and training in Wisconsin with the all-Japanese American 100th Infantry Battalion when he and 24 others suddenly received new orders. They took us to Gulf Park, Mississippi. Now, they didn't explain to you why they were doing this? All was so secret. We stayed there till about three weeks, you know, on the island. And then they told us we're going to train dogs. But actually, us guys, we the baits, you know, dog, yeah. dog baits. According to Ray, the dog soon grew accustomed to the 25 Japanese Americans, so he was ordered to use brutal methods to try to teach the dogs to, quote, hate. You hit the dog. I hit the dog till he bleeds. Ray was given protective 
yards and ordered by the dog's handler to retreat 30 paces and wait. And he told the dog, kill him. Not to attack, say kill. That's a command they give. So when they come for you, they mean business. The dog's so mad already because I hit him. Yes. And oh, bite me all over the place. So it's not a pleasant thing, but uh, I always say, well, that's our duty. We have to do it. So why did they select Japanese-American soldiers to be the live bait? The Swedish guy told us that we smell like the enemy Japanese, mm -hmm. which is wrong. The theory is not right. I'm doing an investigation trying to find out about him. Do you know anything about Mr. Prestra? I, I really can't say too much about him because we hardly, we hardly see him. Did you hear about the investigation of Mr. Prestra? No. Uh, maybe they were investigating him, but they don't want us to be friendly with the trainers, nor the dogs. Thank you very much. You've been a great help. Ray never heard about Prestre after the war. He said Prestre had looked at least 20 years older than the enlisted men, so he's almost certainly passed away. I'm heading to Fort Lee, Virginia, home to the U.S. Army's Quartermaster Museum and some modern-day military working dogs. I'm meeting the museum's curator, Luther Hansen, and dog handler, Staff Sergeant Nathan Gibson. The dog can sniff out a fugitive in the woods or narcotics hidden in a vehicle. I asked Sergeant Gibson if their dogs could be trained to identify and attack certain races based on their scent. No, sir, it won't be by scent. So the dog doesn't know the difference between an Asian, a Caucasian, an African American? Not, not by scent, sir. I tell both men about my investigation. Luther confirms what Barry told me about the secret mission on Cat Island. I've heard some unbelievable stories about how Japanese American soldiers were treated on Cat Island. Is that why Mr. Prester was being investigated? No, I don't believe so. The Army looked at it as a way of saving American lives. They tried it for 90 days as an experiment only. Why did the Army end Presta's experiment? It was unsuccessful. The dogs were unable to determine that between the Japanese Americans and any other sense they were able to find in the woods, they were also unable to keep the packs together. Unless you had a handler there pointing and giving direction to the individual dogs, the dogs went after different scents and essentially either lost or didn't find the soldiers. He explains that after Prestre was fired, the Army Quartermaster Corps took over the Cat Island training program. We weren't investigating his methods. Why was Mr. Presta investigated by the military? I'm not sure, but I do know that the papers have recently been declassified at the National Archives, and there may be some more answers there for you. Thank you very much. I've requested the declassified Cat Island files from the National Archives in Washington, D.C. My office has forwarded them to me in the field. It appears that as Prestre's 90-day experiment wound down in January 1943, an inspection was held to show Army brass the results. And it doesn't sound like it went well at all. Listen to this. There was no actual ferocity displayed by the dogs. It was more nearly comparable to a vaudeville act. It sounds like things went downhill fast for Prestre. Check this out. Mr. William A. Prestre was notified that his employment with this project terminates February 2nd, 1943. You know, I still don't see a reason for the Army to have started an official investigation. Wait a minute. It looks like Prestre's firing wasn't the end of the matter. Subject. Investigation of Cat Island Training Program, conducted March 30 through 31st, 1943. Prestry hadn't gone down without a fight. He claimed the Army had hampered his ability to get results from his dogs, and he made several allegations of incompetence against his Army bosses. And it looks like in each case, the Army investigators ruled against Mr. Preston. But the investigation had suddenly taken a far more serious tone. I found what I've been looking for. Listen to this. So you were right. There was controversy. There was tension around Mr. Preston and the Cat Island training facility.
Andrew about William Prestray's plan to train attack dogs, and the men like Raymond Nosaka, whose duty it was to serve as human bait. As degrading and distasteful as that may sound, these men really distinguished themselves in this miserable circumstance. They still served their country even though they weren't exactly treated very well back home. But you wanted to know specifically about Mr. Preston. And our declassified documents has a lot to say about that as well. The investigation into the failed dog training program had turned into secret scrutiny of its unstable promoter. Prior to his departure, Mr. Preston made several threats, the gist of which were that unless the project is continued, he would make plenty of trouble for any and all that opposed him, up to and including the president. Listen to this. It is believed advisable to acquaint the FBI with his actions and attitude and request that he be placed under surveillance if deemed necessary. I can find no mention of Mr. Presta after this. Wow. I'm really glad, glad that I was able to stumble upon something that, that brings this little-known piece of World War II history to light. And for that, I thank you very much. Thank you very much. Nice work. Although the Cat Island experiment was a failure, the Army's overall war dog program was a success. By the end of the war, the Army had trained close to 10,500 dogs and created 15 war dog platoons. Almost 1,900 dogs served overseas, mostly as sentries, scouts, messengers, and draft dogs. Their success proved how valuable man's best friend could be to soldiers and solidified the role of the working dog in the military. Visible to a